following podcast is being brought to you by the Defy Life Podcast Network. So you can just lock me up? No. Nah. Just bury me in the ocean with my ancestors that jumped from the ships. Because they knew death was better than bondage. Oh, you think darkness is your ally? You merely adopted the dark. I was born in it. Molded by it. I didn't see the light until I was already a man. By then it was nothing to me but blind. <laughs> the shadows betray you because they belong to me. In the hell do you think you are? Okay, it's not working out. I'm gonna need the suit back. For how long? Forever. Yeah. Yeah, no, 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 please, please, please. Let's have it. You don't understand. Please, this is all I have. I'm nothing without this suit. If you're nothing without this suit, then you shouldn't have it. Okay? So, Oz, this week, we actually are going to have a very special guest on who brought the topic to me, and I thought it was a very intriguing topic. Oz, this week we are going to be discussing why Batman, Superman, and those characters need a at least a decade break. Um, Oz, before we get to our guest, what do you think about that premise, and are you excited to dive into this topic? I am. I am. Uh at first, I um, when you first approached that we were going to discuss this on a like open mic kind of forum and and what the subject matter was, the first in, initial emotion was anger. Um, uh, <laughs> then I was met with uh, with um, guilt, um, remorse, and then finally the last emotion I had about it was acceptance. I, I, and this is going to be a really good discussion. I think it's worth um, diving into a little bit further. You know. And our our guest for this week, the the kingpin of Defy Life, the host of the flagship Defy Life podcast, Mr. J.R. Glimp. Mr. J.R. Glimp, welcome to the show, and tell every, tell everyone a little bit why you picked this topic. Uh, well, first of all, thanks for having me. It's always good to be uh, amongst the land of the nerds. I, I, I need my <laughs> nerds every now and then. Um, so thank you guys for having me. Uh, but yeah, I was just replying to one of your Facebook posts, uh, uh, you know, throw out a topic and we'll talk about it on the show. So um, anybody that's ever heard me, um, I think I was on and discussed. Um, we got into the discussion when, with Migs about, um, you know, Marvel versus DC and the movies and how they approach things. And I've, I've, I've always, you know, felt that. Superman, the Superman and, and Batman, now Joker stories are just becoming so redundant. Um, and it would be good for them to just give them a break for a while. So just put a right, nice round number on it. I just picked a decade. Just give them a break for a decade. <laughs> <laughs> and, uh, you, know, um, you know, we'll dig further into it. But yeah, I think uh, there needs to be a moratorium on Batman and Superman especially. And, uh, and 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 also the Joker, just for just for a good while. It's very curious you say that, especially about the Joker, considering mm-hmm. how well his Joker, this Joker single movie, which a lot of people didn't mm-hmm. think would do well, but did commercially and successfully and critically very well. Um, it's very surprising you bring him into the fold with Batman and Superman. Yeah, and I love the Joker movie, um, so it doesn't mean I didn't like it. I loved it. Um, but that's why I say, especially Batman and Superman, but I can see them going down this path with Joker as well. And I just don't want them to do that. So I'll include him into the bunch. I hear that. <clears throat> okay. Um, Oz, do you have any other characters that you think should also be put into this bubble? Wow. So Jay came up hard, um, 
with his extreme bias for DC characters for some reason. Um, uh, man, I, uh, well, see, they kind of did it with Captain America, where they where they aged him, and they're going to use um, the Winter Soldier and um, Falcon. So, that, so that's that's one from Marvel. Um, I got, I, I'm 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 gonna have to come back to him that one, because because they wait because I'm gonna tell you like this my personal personal view and I know we'll get it because people are gonna be like oh well why don't you say Star Trek dude I I, I believe Star Wars needs a good break mm-hmm. um and I also uh, believe like Indiana Jones needs a good break like like rest him like let like, let him rest in peace Indiana you know? Jones. Look, I'm sorry, man. Look, look dude, here, here's my thing about this guy. He was like created out of like Doc Savage, Alex Quartermain to produce Indiana Jones, this great, ama- amazing adventurer, ar- ar- um, archaeologist, gentleman, that kind of guy. I get it, but dude, like this dude has been through all these things, and like they're not the the each one they release, it's not that great. It's it's kind of worse than the last one they did. So, like, that's a sign that you need to just chill. Okay, if we're going to give Superman, Wonder Woman, and Batman a break, I think we need to just go ahead and, like, throw Indiana Jones in that place, too, and throw Star Wars in there, too, because Lord knows we need a Star Wars break. Oh, you sound like a good old Trekkie talking about throw Star Wars in there, too, but you're not going to throw Star Trek in there. Well, uh, well here, here's my thing. Oh, here we <laughs> go. Come on. Okay, look, check, check it out. Do I want to see, like, like Spock? Do I want to see Captain Kirk? Fuck no, dude. They can go too, man. They they all need a break. But look, look what they're doing with Picard. They gave Picard a break. They literally gave him a 10-year break. And came back with his own series and came back strong. You know? Jay, what do you think about Star Trek and Star Wars? <laughs> I'm, I'd be the least qualified to ask that question because I've, I've seen one... Star Trek movie in my lifetime and that was because it was on a first date way back when and I was trying to be nice and no, 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 wait, 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 listen to you Jay, you decided to go on a first date to impress your first date girl and took her to a Star Trek movie because she's a Trekkie, so See? I was trying kudos, to... kudos right, so I was, uh, you know <laughs> so I've seen one Star Trek movie and Maybe two thirds of one Star Wars movie when I was like nine. <laughs> well, I'll, I'll tell you this, Jay. If if your date was black, there were more black people between you and your date than there have been in all the Star Wars movies combined so far. Oh wow! Well, yeah, she, she, yeah. she's black. Now, okay, okay, it has been more, but there's just been just as many. Now I'm gonna tell you, in light of all this social unrest. And getting our props and, and trying to get some social justice. Imagine being in the Star Wars galaxy where there's only like two black, the three black people. Come on, man. Come on. Yeah, and, trying, and now they're trying to blackball John Boyega, so it may not be that mean. See, oh, dude, that dude, that dude had to cry. He literally had tears and said, "I, I know this is going to destroy my career, but I got to speak." Wow. Yeah. Well, he'll, but, um, uh, he'll be, he'll be I, good. I never, yeah, he's yeah, fine. Because let me tell you, um, oh, I forget the, uh, he's a producer, writer. This cat, and he's white too, so I, 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 I want to consider him an ally. But like this guy, this guy, he said in his Twitter post, he said, I would crawl through broken glass just to have him glance at one of my scripts. I was like, oh, he good, dude. He okay. He okay. Oh, yeah, he good. Right. He good. And, and Jordan Peele already came out and said, yeah, we got you, dude. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> Jordan, Jordan, uh, Jordan Peele, like, listen, man, we've we've had a role waiting for you. Just come on and sign oh, on the dotted right. line. Oh, and, 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 and quiet and quiet is kept, man. Everybody's like, oh, um, he and Peele, oh god, they're funny. They make me laugh. You chuckle on my belly. Jordan Peele is trying to underground take over on the on, on the inside track of stuff, being a director, executive producer, producer on TV and movies, man. So right. like. You know, it, it's it's some stuff, man. As my mama said today, when I talked to her, um, I had to consult her about some stuff. 
Um, she's just like, you know, th- this this time she feels like it's different. Mm. Be- um, this whole struggle, I know we're getting off subject because of me, obviously, but this, she feels like this whole struggle and everything is different because she said there's a lot of young white people who are like, who are upset too and who are out there like doing, I know this happened in the 60s, but trust me to this, to the extent that it was happening now, it's, it's crazy. And when your mom, when your black mom says that, who's a civil rights, mm-hmm. like hardcore activist, SCLC president, you know, wow. she, you know, you, 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 and like, I'm talking national president too, by the way, <laughs> you not to give out too much stuff, but like, but you, you got to, I'm, I'm, I'm taking her word and stuff. So. Yeah. I, uh, I appreciate that. Cause I, I kind of felt the same way, but I was like, yeah, what do I know? I wasn't around for that stuff. So that's good to hear. So. Yeah, you. man. Yeah. And, and I think that the biggest thing that people can do is start talking. Like, it, it, like, I, I like, Everybody needs to talk. The nerds need to talk to each other. The blurs need to talk to each other. The the generation before us needs to talk to us, and we need to listen to them too. You know, because like they right. have so much, they have so much insight, man. so much insight to how, right. how how what they had to um, go through. So I'm just yeah, tirade over. Yeah. Well, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure. Uh, I'm sure y'all remember. I don't even know what episode. Of, I don't remember what show it was. Whether it was y'all show or my show. We got in a discussion on the magical Negro. Oh yeah, <laughs> yeah, yeah that was that was here. Okay, <laughs> so I, I, I kind of since um, the, since we dropped our episode on on Wednesday morning, I have been I I, I now know what it feels like to be a magical Negro. I've received oh, yeah. four phone calls from yeah. white people I know. From my past, like former managers, bosses of mine, r- relying on me to guide them through this moment of whether they are like, have I done racist things in your presence in the past? Please feel help like, me. I, I, I feel like Bagger Vance, aren't you? Right. Yeah. So you know, like Bagger Vance or John Coffee, whoever it may be. <laughs> oh, 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 oh. So, sounds like the coffee only spelled different. Right. <laughs> so, I have I have felt like the uh, designated magical Negro for the last three days. So, I, 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 and Jay, listen, Jay, Kingpin, Godfather, you are not the only one. Believe <laughs> that, okay? It, it is it is symptomatic because it's like I don't I don't want to call it an awakening because man, you should have been woke a long time ago, dude. All right. <laughs> um, and 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 and, and like regular Scott, he only he only gonna give me one minute for my um for my tirade, so I want to use. Oh, you you mind. already lost you already lost the conversation <laughs> for today. That was your you conversation. Back <laughs> but but I will, but I will say this, man. Um, actually, actually, before you say anything else, allow yeah, me to set the table. Yeah. This is taking knee from Marvel vs. DC. I am your host, Regular Scott, and I'm sure you've heard him for the last ten minutes. My co-host, the comic connoisseur, the mighty Ozzy Killmonger. Oz, what else do you have to say? I want to say what is up. Very, very good people. <laughs> and we have the kingpin of Defy Life, the host of the Defy Life podcast, the flagship, Mr. J.R. Glimp. J.R., plug anything and everything you want. Yo, it's J.R., man. Uh, co-founder of the, uh, the entire Defy Life network. And I say it that way because I'm so proud of this kind of stuff. Uh, the manifestation of Take a Knee from Marvel vs. D.C., it's just a part of what we do here. So definitely check out, you know, of course, the Dep- the Defy Life podcast with me, Al, and Thomas. But uh, take a knee, bring y'all, you guys bring it hard every week, man. I can't wait to listen to you guys. But uh, check out DefyLifePods.com. We house all of our um, podcast material. And we've got some new stuff coming for you, too. We've got a lot more estrogen coming to the network. So look forward to uh some some female hosted shows, some more of them coming through the network. So, shout out to you guys. Thanks for having me. Appreciate that. Appreciate that. And, and while he's being very humble, they uh, on their latest episode they had a a, a very nice open discussion and just kind of laid everything out on the table and talked about things. And it's it's a very good conversation amongst three intelligent black men about what's going on and kind of what their feelings are. It's very in depth, very good conversation. So definitely check that out as well. I appreciate it. Already. Um, 
So, as you said, you can find us on the Five Live Pods. You can follow us on Twitter at Nefo Marvel vs DC. That's the number four. We are going to give uh, reveal the winner of our giveaway today. We have someone. So, Oz, you will have your Killmonger conversation, but you won't be choosing it. So, whatever you prepared, throw it away because you won't be using it oh. this week. <laughs> um. Oh, 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 brother. No, no, I will, but but we'll still do what you got to do too. But it's cool. No, no, no. We 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 definitely don't have time for two Killmonger conversations on one episode. <laughs> oh, 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 we we oh, okay. certainly don't have that much time for that. Hey, hey, Jay. Um, watch this. Okay. <laughs> we definitely don't have that much time. This is this is gonna. Uh, hey, Jay. Oz won't get this reference. This is gonna turn into around the horn. Oh, uh. <laughs> no, no, no! I don't get it, but 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 I know what I do get. Here we go. I'm gonna get two. I'm gonna get two, son. All right. Um, so let's 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 not wait any longer. Let's let's find out who the winner of our giveaway is. Now, remember, all you had to do. <laughs> I don't know where this fascination with you and this sound effect came from, but after we got off the air last <laughs> week, this is what this guy kept doing all of a sudden for like five minutes. Burr, 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 whatever burr, burr. it is. <laughs> and I don't know what his fascination uh, with it is. He's- Oz is officially seven. He's seven years old. He's just no, dude, randomly. A, I, I'm going to tell you, I, I, I recently saw my birthday, and I can confirm that I am eight. So. Oh, my bad. Sorry. <laughs> happy, happy, happy birthday, by the way, man. So, Fellow uh, Jeffrey. Our, our winner, who liked, shared the show, and commented on what he wanted Oz's Killmonger conversation oh, to cool. be. Very cool. Is Philip Darnell. At, on Twitter at War Vinny, W A R V I N N I E. You did all three of those things. You will be receiving a Take a Knee for Marvel vs. DC t shirt, and there will be a couple extra goodies in there, a couple throwback yeah, yeah. goodies. There will be a few little surprises in there as well, but congratulations. You have successfully copped yourself the hottest t shirt out there right now. Yeah, oh, for sure. And yo, yeah. congrats, Philip. And. Add me on Twitter too. I need all that followers I can get in. So. Oh, I, I checked his followers. He's not following you. Oh, of course I know. You're, you're not following me. So. <laughs> I know, but come on. Okay, true that. But um, so yeah, here's, what, yeah. here's what Philip wanted. Wants Oz. He's here's what he wants from your Killmonger conversation. Okay. The topic is PC America trying to change already established heroes into PC ones instead of using ones that already are made, just not well known. Dick Grayson is cool. Star Trek is better than Star Wars. And Ozzy and Scott are awesome. Oh, man, Philip, um, I, I'm not crying. I'm just chopping up onions right now. So just forgive me for a second. You hit everything that I hold kind of dear. And um, I, I was talking to regular Scott about this. I had a conversation with, like, well, it's weird. I had a conversation with a couple of friends and my wife just this week about this. Yeah. Um, it, and it is completely, I, I agree with you, it is completely politically correct PC. Now, the problem with being PC and politically correct is, in America, there's only two political parties. So that, that, that they're established. So that's the problem right there. So you got to see if you're being politically correct for the Democrats, for the Republicans, or what your establishing found great foundation is for that. And when you are being PC, you're trying to make everybody happy, and that is an awesome recipe to make everybody hate your guts. Okay, so um, every time they do that, it's garbage. That is some executive who's sucking down some wheat grass here in Kumbaya thinking this is how we solve issues. That is not. That is how you get, yes, the basement boys upset and irritated and in a tirade on Twitter and nothing gets done. Philip, you're absolutely correct. There are so many characters out there that are not white and that are white males that we can like start examining. Like, And by the way, if if you think that there aren't, Make some characters yourself. That's how things happen. It wasn't Stan Lee, you know, Jack Kirby, Stan Lee, um, 
Bob Kane, they were just people just going, ah, well, I'm, yeah, everything's cool. They were like, yo, I want to see this. This is what needs to be represented, you know? We have the same capacity and stuff, too. So, yeah, Philip, you're absolutely right. There are so many characters out there that we can um, we can delve into, but people are scared, and they're going, well, I'm investing in this, which rightly so. They're sitting there saying, I'm investing this much money into this, and I want to make this money back or double the money. So basically what you got in Hollywood is a straight up gambling system. It, it, it is gambling at its finest. So why don't you take a gamble on some unknown stuff? You know, you got nothing to lose, you know? So uh, and you, you think you're going to lose your money on the movies? Movie theaters are out. You'll get your money in DVDs. So Philip, you're right. That, that, that's, that's what Ozzy feels about that. All right. Nice, Ozzy, with two minutes to go as well. Very, very impressive. Um, Jay, do you have a rebuttal to that? Uh, I pretty much agree. I, mean, I think I, I agree. I think the only challenge with that is that a lot of the I, – I, I can understand why they do it because so many of the established and more followed and more engaging – characters are white male characters so it's it is a gamble to start from scratch with a new character um, when there's already some kind of establishment there um but i do agree that it's an easy way to piss everybody off <laughs> so um I, I would prefer just establishing new characters um or even characters that um are under established and, and give them, um, you know, a, a different platform. But yeah, I agree. Oz that, uh, changing characters just for the sake of changing and trying to satisfy everyone is an easy way to piss everybody. Off. Yeah. And, and, and if you, and here, I, I want to try and get some actual like hardcore evidence for people. Did you, people are like, Oh, I don't want to see a black cowboy. Who wants to see that? Django and chain was like a hit. Mm-hmm. You know what I'm saying, dude? So don't. <laughs> no one has any excuse. It's the 21st century. No one, no one has any excuse not to try something. All right. You know, like oh my god, they th- think how much money they 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 sunk into turds when they could have like sunk a third of that money into something. And be like, oh shit, I made three instead of sinking all my money into this turd with Nicolas Cage or whoever the latest fad is. Mm-hmm. Make three movies, and if if one does super well and the other two do okay, you still made all your money back. What did, what did, what did Nicolas Cage do to you? Oh, man. That, that cat right Why you, you bring that guy into it? His last few movies have been pretty good. Oh, what? Wait, what? Mandy, Mandy was three? pretty good. Uh, okay, dude. But you didn't like, you didn't like know. Mandy? Time out. Time out. No, I'm, I'm I, asking. I, I appreciate... I, yes, I did. I appreciate, I appreciate it. And I appreciate Nicolas. But we know if someone said... Um, here's a script I just found floating down the floating down the stream. Nicholas Cage was like, how much is involved in this? Cool. We can't knock him for that. Dude, hey, remember, these are our opinions. You okay. love Nicholas Cage. I mean, I, and I, you still that's didn't cool. tell me why, I'm, I'm just asking why you bring that man into it. Out of all the people, you bring Nicholas into it. That man is sitting hey. at home, not bothering nobody, and now all of a sudden his nose started quivering because somebody's talking about him. Hey, Jay, he was just like, man, I used to love taking these for taking, taking these for Marvel vs. DC. What's wrong with a Nick, Nick, you know you're still my boy and everything, dude. You know you know you can still come up for coffee. You know how we do. But that was just like that was an example. I can use any I, okay, here we go. Robert De Niro. I'll use anybody, dude. What's up? Yes. <laughs> yes. What? What? <laughs> no, I was, I was waiting for you to reply. But okay. Oh no. Okay. Say it again. I I thought you were talking. I thought I, I'm sorry. No, I, I'll use it. I, I, Nicholas Cage was the first one came to mind. I'll use anybody that we that we see a little too much. Okay. okay. All right. Give so. me somebody else. I said Robert De Niro. Don't we see that cat too much? When the last time you seen Robert De Niro? Man, dude, I see that cat on Twitter. I see that cat, and I see that cat. He's got a show on Prime. Uh, he's got a show on Prime now. Okay. Oh, thank you. 
right, all right, touche, touche. All right, well, fine. He can, he can. I'll let him go there instead of Nick. Man, leave Nick out. Of here. Leave Nick alone. <laughs> Has, wait, hashtag wait, hold leave hold, Nick hold, alone. No, no, wait, wait. Time, time, no, hold on, hold on. All jokes aside, time out. Real talk. What? And it's not what do I have a problem with Nick Cage? Why are you so in love with Nick Cage? <laughs> <laughs> what this man? What what this man got on you, dude? Hey. He got Come the on. tapes, man. You know, he got okay, the tapes. I know he got the tapes. Dude. He got the tapes. That's all I can say is he got the tapes. Dude, this guy up here. Um, Nick, um, I, I, it, it wasn't me who said that. It was, it was a whole okay? <laughs> Come on, dude. Um, AJ, what, do you, what are your thoughts on Nicolas Cage? <laughs> <laughs> I, I like Nicolas Cage. I mean, yeah. I, I kind of, you know, I mean, he is who he is. I don't expect anything from him that he's not going to give me. <laughs> right. Um, but you know when Nicholas Cage is, when Nicholas Cage acts, he is being Nicholas Cage. It's sort of like, I'm sorry. It's sort of like when this Denzel does his thing, you're like, yeah, it's Denzel, right? Right. Yeah. 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 You know, you know what you get. Yeah. There's certain actors that are big because of who they are, um, not yeah. because of their ability to be versatile, but because of who they are. Denzel's yeah. one. Cage is one. Will Keanu, Smith is definitely uh, one. Yeah, Will Smith, Keanu Reeves. Like we know yeah. they're gonna beat themselves, um, but it's entertaining. Um, so people tend to write roles for them instead of them adapting to roles. Uh, like, you know, you know, you look at somebody like Jeffrey Wright, you know, Jeffrey Wright adapts to every role. So Dude, you never he, know what he is the biggest chameleon. He, he right. can literally blend in it. I was like, man, did you see Jeffrey Wright? He was playing a white woman in the world. That's crazy. <laughs> right. You know yeah. what I'm saying? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> and he nailed it. It was weird. So, right. Yeah. Yeah, that was, that was surprisingly funny. <laughs> <laughs> that, that, was, that was pretty good. I was, <laughs> you genuinely had me cracking up over here. <laughs> that, was, that was a good one. All right. Um, yeah, what an intro. Let's uh, let's get to the news tidbits. Oh, actually, I do I do have one one quick shout out for uh, my man JD. We did a blackout for our podcast. Shout out to you, JD. You did a great job with that. Showdown Pro Wrestling Podcast. Cheap plug. Check us out. Um, shout out to you as well, JD. Did a great job with that. Um, shout out, to, JD. Yeah, shout out, JD, man. Let's get to the news tidbit. Oh, um, Jay, actually, I do want you to promote that article by Meg Berry. Oh, wow. Um, the, the the Dear White People article? Yes. Mm-hmm. That was amazing. Um Shout out to Meg. So first of all, um, I'll back go back a little. Shout out to Kim from AEN who has been all over me and pooed money about bringing in female blood to the network. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, and I do agree that we can be a little testosterone heavy at times. Uh, so it's good to uh, good when we find Meg and she was on board. And just from reading the stuff on her, you know, her own blog, I knew she'd be a good fit. And um, the Dear White People article is a prime example of what we say when we when we describe an ally and someone who's fearless and being not just being non-racist, but uh, but being Mm anti-racist. There's a difference. Mm-hmm. And um, and to, to be open and fearless, that was a fearless article to me. And mm-hmm. she literally broke down the uh, the episode of uh, Amy Cooper calling the police on. Uh, <laughs> oh on man, uh, 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 and, uh, on her distant cousin who she didn't know. Mm-hmm. No, <laughs> right. You know what I'm saying? They got the both have the same last name, and she look, dude. She woke up. I she woke up going, I. Did not think this shit was going to happen like this. Right. Yeah. But it, and, and it goes to show that even unintentionally, the most friendly seeming white person can do the most damage in, in the Absolutely. midst of it. Absolutely. Um, but I always say the most damaging enemy you can have is one that thinks they're your, they're your ally. That's right. Because on a day-to-day basis, I'm sure Miss Cooper doesn't operate on this, you know, on the level of, you know, calling people the N-word and spitting in their faces. She doesn't. She doesn't operate like that. She thinks, oh, oh you know, I'm not. I'm, I'm not biased against black people. 
And Jay, in her day-to-day operations, she's probably not. Jay, she got she has money, I will promise you. I promise you she donated to Obama and Hillary. Right. <laughs> exactly. You know, mm-hmm. and, and 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 she thinks that, you know, that the Cosby show is still a good show to watch. Mm-hmm. Um, you know, all the you say, but she has no other black people who are above her, I bet, in her in, in where she works at. Or where she right. lives too. That's yeah. the thing. That's the thing. Like in New York, she probably got you know, it's probably a black doorman at her building. Yeah. And she who, thinks, who, who you know, she speaks to every day. Speaks to every day, asking about his family. Yeah. And that's her black friend who she says, Hey, I have black friends. Yeah. Um I gave him a uh, Starbucks gift card for Christmas. Right, he, exactly. So. Yeah, all that. And so to her, she's and and you know, she's benign, basically. Um and but it that switch that was and you can see it in the video when that switch oh, yeah. switched, she's fully aware of her privilege and her power and her power and she's fully aware of what can happen when police are provoked mm-hmm. to you know to 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 attack as she put it an african american man Th- that uh, was her mace dude that was her mace right. Absolutely. And um, to see even when she escalated it, when the police didn't, when the 911 operator didn't seem to understand the issue, how she escalated it and went into dramatics and specifically said that we're African-American, like she knows. Yeah. And um, just to, and, and to be, and to end this and be short, she wanted in that moment, she wanted what happened to, to George Floyd to happen to Mr. Cooper. That's no, what she wanted to happen. She she wanted she she that was a total retali- retaliation right. on on him. And and, and again, I like I I, I I can't say it enough. That was her gun. That was her mace. Right. Mm-hmm. It, it, she people are like oh, but it, words never hurt you, but words are weaponized. Words can weaponize, and mm-hmm. and and she knew far well. I will promise. Okay, fine. She might watch Fox News. That could be wrong, but to a lot of liberals, man, to a lot of like white liberals, mm-hmm. you, you 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 think you're not doing harm, and you think you're just being benign, but you in somewhere in the corner of your mind, you know what these words will do. You know what will happen if this happens here. Absolutely. You know, and... and, and, and I'm going to have to jump in right here. Um, Yeah, yeah, this is... uh, We'll have to save this for another conversation because we got got nerd stuff to talk about. Yeah. (laughs) We got Um, some nerd stuff to talk about. Yeah, yeah. Well, hold on. But but, but, but see, this is the thing. Um, and, and 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 I told you, regular Scott, before, and I keep saying it, it's all interconnected. We got nerd stuff to talk about, but yo, Mr. Cooper was the biggest blurb in the world. He used to work for Marvel. Uh, he was. Yeah. Well, that doesn't, doesn't make editor. him the biggest blurb in the world, but I get your point. Dude, all right, that, let's get to yeah, let's get to the wait, news wait, tibbets, uh, news, wait, tibbets wait, wait, news tibbets, news tibbets, news tibbets. This dude watches birds every day. He's a fucking nerd, man. <laughs> okay. Okay. All right. Um, first bit of news: <laughs> Ryan Gosling is r- rumored to be starring in the Wolfman reboot. Well, I know, dude. Uh, Jay, do you uh, what do you know about the Wolfman? I don't know a lot about the Wolfman, but uh, speaking of actors who are them in yep. every role in the play, um, Ryan Gosling is going to be Ryan Gosling playing the Wolfman. <laughs> dude, Jay, do you really think he's Ryan Gosling? In everything he does. Um, it's, the older he gets, yes. Okay. Um, okay. And then Crazy Stupid Love was like the epitome of Ryan Gosling. Turning into Ryan Gosling in every film he's in. <laughs> did you did you see Blade Runner? Yeah, yeah. Okay. No, and I don't like there's nothing you know, he's not just because he's not a method actor, it doesn't mean it's not a bad thing, but he's becoming the cool, you know, hip guy who's you know, is quirky and has always, you know, witty comebacks. That's Ryan Gosling. Um, Some might say he might become like Nick Cage. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Ryan Cage. Ryan Cage. Listen, listen, Nick, listen. Nick Gosling. Nah, Nick you Gosling. Can, I, I don't have a problem with, with the Ryan Gosling, but you can't, you got to leave Nick alone. 
<laughs> uh, this dude, I don't hit the trigger. Oh, trigger warning! Trigger warning! <laughs> you got, you got to leave, hashtag leave Nick alone, man. Uh, this dude was like, "Yo, man!" Ever since I watched Ghost Rider, Ghost Rider. Nah, not even, not even that big of a Ghost Rider guy. <laughs> Ever since I watched it's National Treasure, in Arizona. It, 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 it was National Treasure for this dude. He will, he will raise in Arizona for that cat. Or, or, or fear and loathing in Las Vegas. It was it was national treasure for him. Gone in gone in sixty seconds. Gone in sixty seconds. Face off. Face off is good too. Face off is solid too. I know. <laughs> he was great in Kick Ass. Oh, oh wow. dude, of course he was. Yeah, Kick Ass too, right? No, no, Kick Ass one. Kick Ass one. Yes, 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 yes. Yeah. yeah. How we get back yeah. with Nicolas Cage, man? We, I thought we was gonna leave that man alone. Hey, yeah, dude, I, I'm I, I, I ain't mess with um, I ain't mess with um, Francis Ford, uh, Francis Ford, um, Fran, was it Francis Ford um, oh. Coppola or whatever's um, nephew? I ain't mess with that cat, dude. All right, he, all right. He, he legacy, man. I ain't mess with that dude. All right, well, leave him alone. Um, Hercules is rumored to be making his MCU debut in an upcoming Marvel Studios project. <laughs> so the question becomes, what Marvel Studios... So clearly this is saying that he's not going to have a solo film. What movie do you guys think he could potentially show up in? What the Dude. He's got no choice but to be in either a Hulk or a Thor. Well, Hulk's not yeah, going to have a solo movie. Okay, well, then he, got, he has no choice but to be in a Thor thing. That's what I was going to say, Thor as well. <clears throat> okay, okay. Will it be uh, Fat Thor? I'm sorry? Will it be Fat Thor or is Thor back in shape? See? I think Thor will do, be back in shape. Hey, I'm yeah. saying, I'm not one to judge anybody. If you can find that delicious beer that is only from um, like Asgard, man. Please. <laughs> right. I, I I drink that. Less filling taste great. Mm-hmm. It's fine. Okay. Hey, so well, regular Scott, I have a thing for you. What's up? Do you think this Ryan Gosling <laughs> werewolf movie is sort of trying to get back on track? Because they had a whole plan with Tom Cruise and the Mummy to bring back the Mummy, the Frankenstein, the werewolf. Do you think this is a way to try and get back on track to get those movies out again with the the, the monsters universe with tom cruise Mon- and yeah. uh the van dracula untold um right yeah i uh i don't but <clears throat> that doesn't mean that plans can't change i don't think this is that right now i think this is going to be its own entity and then if mm-hmm. it do- if it's successful i could definitely see them spinning it into it and maybe whatever movie they have planned next tying it all together Okay. And then, and then I got a question for Jay. While he's been so abusive towards Wonder Woman, Wonder Woman, Superman, and Batman, do you feel like zombies, vampires, and werewolves also need a ten-year break too? Mm, that's a good question. Um, one by one, zombies definitely. <laughs> um, Werewolves have kind of they've kind of been on a break, I guess, for a little. So they're due to come back. Yep, I agree. I agree. Vampires. Hmm. I, as long as it's a new twist on a vampire, I'm good with it. Um, like, you, like a new twist. Like, you, do you like your vampires when they come in the sunlight to be shiny, shimmering diamonds? <laughs> um. I don't know. Yeah. They had nothing. Like, yeah. Like. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, like. When there was, it was like when uh, when the Blade trilogy came out, there was a different twist. Yep, so, they were good. All right, so I guess like an evolution on that. Um, you know, just something different. I can still deal with 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 uh, vampires, but definitely no zombies. I'm sick of zombies at this point. Yeah, 